one of the most important things we have to keep track of is what kind of hypothesis test or um, confidence interval should we use. Now there are many, many types of com uh, confidence intervals and hypothesis testing that are out there, some of which we've covered in this class and some of which we haven't. One of the things that you probably want to include on your notes that you get to take in to the exam is some version of this decision tree that you see here on the screen. When we come down with our problem, one of the first things we want to do is look at how many samples we have. One sample, two samples, or many samples. With many samples, we can use a chi-square test to test for proportions. We will not have any of those on the exam, so we don't have to worry about that right now. Whether we have one sample or two samples, there are basically two or three things that we, we have been uh, testing. If we have one sample, we've been testing a mean, and the other one is testing a proportion. With the means, we're, to test, we're testing a known mean, we're a mean of a sample versus a hypothesized known mean. We have two options. If the, if the standard deviation of the population is known, we use a z-test, or if it's an interval, <coughs> then we confidence interval, we'd be using the z-interval. If it is a more likely case where the standard deviation is unknown, we're going to be using a t-test or a t-interval. On the other hand, if we're comparing proportions, we're going to be using a one-proportion z-test, or if it's a confidence interval, a one-proportion z-interval. And of course, this is what you're going to be using on the calculator. Um, these are kind of the notations there. One-prop z-test, z-test, t-test, t-interval, z-interval, one-prop um, z-interval. If we have two samples, we might be testing proportions. <coughs> and we're testing a proportion, one proportion against another will be a two-proportion z-test. Uh, don't worry about this one here. With two samples, we're testing variances or standard deviations. We'll be doing a two-sample f-test, and we talked about that a little bit in one of the videos of how to use your calculator to do that. If we have two samples, we might be compa comparing means. If they're independent samples, then where sigma is known, that's a two-sample z-test, or two-sample z-interval for the difference in the means. If they're independent samples and sigma is unknown, more is more likely, that's going to be a two-sample t-test, or if it's an interval, the two-sample t-interval for, for the difference in the means. However, if the samples are dependent, particularly if they are paired samples, for example, before and after data, then it's not really two samples, it's one sample of ordered pairs, in which case where we use, we just find the differences and then think of that set of differences as a uh, one sample test. And then we're back to a regular Z test, or well, T test, if sigma is un unknown. If sigma is known, it would be a uh, one sample Z test, but it's much more likely to have sigma unknown. And so this gives you a basic flow chart of how you go about the decision making. So you have this, uh, this file posted. And then also, also in this file we have this table that goes over a little bit more detail about what the, uh, the type of test is and what the assumptions are, what the underlying distribution, what's the formula for the test statistic, what's the formula for confidence interval, some other related formulas, and which one of these things you use on your calculator. The main thing you need to know is how to get to the right part on your calculator and one formula on here that you need to know that's really not built in your calculator is this first one right here. N equals Z alpha over 2 times sigma over E uh, squared. That's the formula for the N when we're doing a confidence interval for a Z interval. Okay, so um, you should know how to use that formula to define n. Other than that, uh, you really shouldn't worry so much about these formulas. You should probably know how to find a z-score, that one right here for the test statistic there, that's kind of important. And then you should probably know this formula for the t-statistic, which is all it is, is the z-score with sigma replaced by s. But all these formulas here uh, for all this other stuff, 
Eh, don't worry about that right now. So, a couple of those formulas. Uh, this one here, uh, probably these formulas here, you could put on your chart, uh, your homework, and then this one, this one right here on the T, you could put that one on your um, thing. You do need to know the degrees of freedom is one mi one less than the sample size. That's an important formula as well. So if you just kind of get those formulas there, those three in the first row and these two here out of the second row, uh, don't really worry about the rest of them. So, important thing, decide which test you need to use, and then we can use it. Alright, happy studying.